October 30th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 1 Peter chapter 4 from the New Testament So since Christ suffered in the flesh, you also arm yourselves with the same attitude, because the one who has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, in that he spends the rest of his time on earth concerned about the will of God and not human desires. For the time that has passed was sufficient for you to do what the non-Christians desire. You live then in debauchery, evil desires, drunkenness, carousing, drinking bouts, and wanton idolatries. So they are astonished when you do not rush with them into the same flood of wickedness, and they vilify you. They will face a reckoning before Jesus Christ, who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. Now it was for this very purpose that the gospel was preached to those who are now dead, so that though they were judged in the flesh by human standards, they may live spiritually by God's standards. For the culmination of all things is near, so be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of prayer. Above all, keep your love for one another fervent, because love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without complaining. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of the varied grace of God. Whoever speaks, let it be with God's words. Whoever serves, do so with the strength that God supplies, so that in everything God will be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, do not be astonished that a trial by fire is occurring among you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in the degree that you have shared in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice and be glad. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, who is the Spirit of God, rests on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or thief or criminal or as a troublemaker. But if you suffer as a Christian... Do not be ashamed, but glorify God that you bear such a name. For it is time for judgment to begin, starting with the house of God. And if it starts with us, what will be the fate of those who are disobedient to the gospel of God? And if the righteous are barely saved, what will become of the ungodly and sinners? So then let those who suffer according to the will of God entrust their souls to a faithful creator as they do good. God, my heart is so sad today. I know that you're in control of everything. And I know that what happens is your will, even when we're completely baffled by it. But I just read this story today about this mega church which is just wrong into itself, this mega church pastor who has a congregation he preaches the prosperity doctrine to, and he just built a $1.7 million home and announced it to his congregation and apologized to them that they were having to have uncomfortable conversations with people about their pastor's new house. And then today I record 1 Peter 4, where it talks about each of us have received at least one gift, but we're to use it to serve one another as good stewards of the very grace of God. And he's not the first pastor that has come into my life who you've given them this amazing gift for, for speaking and getting points across to people. He's not the first one that I've watched use that for his own ego and his own source of financial wealth. Um, The last church I went to imploded because he started off as a man of God. And instead of it being about you, God, and your grace, it became all about him. I think all of us need to be hyper aware that you give us so many blessings that we need to be very intentional that we don't turn around and make those blessings about us. As Peter says, we should be good stewards 
of the varied grace of you. Good stewards means that we use our gifts in the right way at the right time and for the right reason. That it's not for financial gain, it's not for selfish gain, it's not for egos, it's not for labels, it's not for branding, it's not to bring attention to ourselves. It should all point to you and I don't know how a $1.7 million house points to you, God. The only person I can think it points to is the devil. But it's not, I'm not trying to pick on this pastor. Although I hope he does have people around him, brothers and sisters in Christ, who are speaking truth to him. And hopefully, obviously with your will being done, that he's being set back on the right path. But it's not just him. You know, I think of the gifts you've given me and you've given me so many gifts and so many blessings on top of it. And for a long time in my life, I use those for the same reason that pastor's doing. I use them to make money. I use them to make it about me. I used it to please myself. I use it for my comfort. I mean, come on, who needs a $1.7 million home? But I think about the home I built during that time. It was too big for me. Um, it was way over the top as far as something that was even comfortable to live in. Um, same exact situation. Uh, taking the gifts that you had given me that are to be used for you and using them for myself. I think about people you've given the amazing gift of singing to. I definitely don't have that gift. But there's many people out there who you gave amazing talents to in the music world. Are they using it to glorify you? Or are they using it to bring attention to themselves? I see amazing people who are organizing and can do office work and things like that. Again, gifts that I wasn't given. <laughs> um, are they doing it to, to help with your kingdom? Or are they doing it to cause drama and to have, have a label and to make money? God, I, you can tell I'm kind of tumbling over my words today. Because my heart hurts so bad, knowing full well that you have given each and every single one of us at least one gift. I would say almost all of us get tons of gifts and tons of blessings, and yet we just continue to use them for our own gain. God set our, set our minds, our hearts, our thoughts, and most important, our words and actions on your will. That all the talents and gifts and blessings that we've been given in our lives, that we understand that w the only reason we have those things is because of you. The only reason. And the only reason you give us those things is so we can glorify you and help your kingdom, which again glorifies you. God, I don't want to take a gift that you gave me and make it all about me. I did that for such a long time in my life. And it's years and years and years that I will never get back for you. It was selfish time spent exclusively on me. It had nothing to do with you. And now I'm in a, a space where I'm trying to make up for lost time, knowing how precious all of that time truly was. I just want to be intentional about using my gifts for what you want me to do with them. Again, in your timing, show me what needs to be done with what you supply for me, what strength you give to me, and what path you give to me. God, just open my heart to the plan that you have for all of that, to the plan that you have for the gifts you've given me. In your son's name I pray, amen.